Hello everyone, welcome back again to Chinmoy's YouTube channel. So this is the second lesson of 9th ICSC Biology. So today I will be discussing on the tissues, the building block of life. So till now, I think you all have already gone through the first lesson that is the cell, the structure and function of the cell. The cell portion, I think you are thorough about that. So let us start with today's lesson of tissues. So if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel and don't forget to like and share my videos. Now let us start with the today's uh, topic of tissue. Now here what are the learning objectives of this lesson? So at the end of this lesson we, we will be able to define what are tissues. We will uh, list the various tissues which are found in plants. So this animal part I will be taking in the next uh, video because this unit if I am discussing about plants only it is a huge uh, number of tissues you need to learn about. So we will list about various uh, tissues which are found in plants and animals in the next episode we will be discussing. Now we will be classifying the meristematic tissue as well as the permanent tissue. So this is all we will be studying in today's lesson. So let us see what are tissues. Now first we are going to as per our uh, learning objective we are going to discuss what are tissues. So what are tissues? Tissues are actually they are group of similar kind of cells. So they are actually group of similar kind of cells which are performing the same function and having a common origin. So they all the group of cells they are having the same function and they are having a common origin. Okay. So the study of tissues and their function that total thing in biology is called histology. So uh, tissues we have all discussed now that what are they? They are group of similar kind of cells which are performing the same function and having the common origin. And the study of tissues and their functions is known as histology. So this branch of biology which is dealing with the study of tissues and their functions is called histology. Now we all know that plants are able to produce new tissues throughout their whole life. But this is not the same thing for animals. We animals we cannot produce the tissues throughout our own life. Throughout full life we cannot produce the tissue. So let us see what in details we can learn about tissues. Now first we are discussing here plant tissues. So let us take the two types of plant tissues which are uh, we are div dividing on the basis of the stage of development and the dividing capacity. So these two are meristematic tissue and permanent tissue. So how we are, dis the, how we are um, like dividing them? They are being divided on the basis of stage of development. So stage of development is the one uh, point on which they are being divided and the second is that the dividing capacity. So both the stage of development and the dividing capacity are the two things on which these are being divided. Okay, so next let us see what is there. Now first part is the meristematic tissue. So meristematic tissue, what does this term meristematic means? This comes, this uh, meristos is a Greek word. So it is a Greek word meristos. So it is a Greek word meristos from which this term meristematic tissue has come and meristos means divided. So I have already told in the previous slide that these are all divided on the basis of the stage of development as well as their dividing capacity. So meristematic tissue what are these? These are a group of young cells. So they have the capacity of active cell division. These are a group of young cells which are having the capacity of active cell division. Is it clear? Now uh, these young cells are dividing each and every time you see these young cells are dividing and having a capacity of active cell division. Now what are the characteristics of meristematic cells? These are all living cells which are compact. They are compactly packed without the intercellular spaces. They are compact. So they don't have any intercellular spaces and they are rarely having vacuoles and vacuoles are mostly absent. So cells in this type of meristematic tissue, they are very small, thin walled and cuboidal. Okay, their cells are small, thin walled and cuboidal and they have dense granular cytoplasm. Cytoplasm present in these cells are how, how like what they are very much dense and they are granular in nature. 
okay and they are these the nucleus is very prominent in this type of tissue so this type of cells the nucleus is large prominent and they are centrally located almost centrally located nucleus we are having cells are immature and they are undifferentiated so these characteristics of meristematic tissue you should learn and you should just remember that cells are small thin walled cuboidal they are having dense granular cytoplasm uh, the, the nucleus is large prominent and it is centrally located now cells are immature they are undifferentiated now this type of meristematic tissue they continue to divide indefinitely so there is not a certain time they don't have a certain time to which they divide they divide indefinitely so adding new cells to plant so they keep on adding to a cell uh, over a long period of time they add indefinitely adding new cells to plant these cells they don't store or reserve the food material they don't store or reserve the food material they are usually found at the tip of the root or shoot so we know that the root and the shoot are the main parts of a plant which are growing so the root is growing towards the soil deep into the soil in deep rooted plants and the shoot is growing upwards so they are found at the tip as well as at the tip of the root and the shoot not at the tip at the uh, at the lateral sides also they are found so they are mainly present at the tip of the root and shoot which are growing the most now what happens after maturation to new cells produced and they are transformed into permanent tissues so the first one is the meristematic tissue which is on the dividing capacity and after it is developed and matured into new cells they are being transformed to permanent tissues so is it clear to everyone see if you are not uh, getting this meristematic tissue clear when i move on to permanent tissue it will be very difficult to cope up so please make each and every topic uh, uh clear very much clear so that when we move on to the next part it will be easier now here we come uh, with the types of meristem so there are three types of meristem the first one is the epical meristem the second one is the intercalary meristem and the third one is the lateral meristem so now we are going to discuss about these three types of meristem now epical meristem this as the term suggests we can say that it is located at the growing tips so it is located at the growing tips that is apex or apices of the stem roots and their branches so they are located at the tips of stem roots and their branches in growing young leaves and also in the tips of axillary buds now it consists of a group of cells which rise to primary permanent tissue so these cells which are here they rise to give rise to primary permanent tissue now here we are seeing the epical meristem here the intercalary meristem which we are going to learn in the next slide that is this region they have intercalary meristem and here in the sides they have lateral meristem so this we are going to uh, learn in the next two slides so just go through the diagram here i am telling that the epical meristem it is located at the growing tips of the stem roots and their branches now in the growing young leaves and also on the tips of axillary buds now due to the growth of epical meristems there is increase in the length of in there is an increase in the length of stems and roots now due to the growth of this epical meristems there is an increase in the length of stems and roots now the first part was the epical meristem the next one is the lateral meristem so lateral meristem it occurs where lateral means in the sides of the roots and stem and which is responsible for the increase in the diameter so these lateral meristems they are occurring in the sides of the roots as well as of the stem and which are responsible for the increase in the diameter of the plants and their root and stem diameter increases when there are lateral meristems this meristem is occurring at the sides of the roots and stem now they are being responsible for the growth in the thickness how they are helping by addition of the secondary tissue and this phenomena is called the secondary growth now the first growth which was occurring in case of the epical meristem was the primary growth that is growth of the uh, root and growth of the shoots and this one as it is increasing the thickness and by addition of the secondary tissue this is called the secondary growth now some plants they grow in thickness now they are producing laterally from the root tip to the shoot tip with the help of 
now vascular cambium this vascular cambium what it is doing it is producing it is helping to uh, increase the thickness laterally and uh, some plants they are producing with the help of this vascular cambium tissue and cord cambium and this cord cambium i'll be discussing in the in the end part cord cambium this is actually this is the um, uh, the epidermis and when the tissues are growing uh, full so the outer covering or the outer uh, protective layer it is forming the lateral meristems they are forming the cork cambium so the cambium of vascular bundles and the cork cambium these are examples of lateral meristems so what are the two main examples first of all the cambium of vascular t bundles so cambium of vascular bundles and the cambium the cambium of vascular bundles and the cork cambium they are the example of these are the examples of the uh, this lateral meristem now we will move on to the third part or that is the intercalary meristem here you can see and here in this diagram if you follow you can see the ts of a shoot it's been shown that the lateral meristem only it's there in the ts of a shoot so they are helping it to add the secondary tissues to increase the thickness of the roots as well as the stem laterally they are placed so this uh, two examples are cambium of vascular bundles and cork cambium so we are moving to the next or the last part that is the intercalary meristem now what are these intercalary meristem now this intercalary meristem these are apical these are parts of actually apical meristem which gets separated from the apex due to the development of the permanent tissue in between so these are the part of the apical meristem which are being separated how due to the development due to the development of the to uh, due to the development of the permanent tissue in between now intercalary tissue they, what are they helping for these are helping organs for the elongation and are present more mainly they are present at the base of the node we can see here intercalary meristem they are present at the growth of the base of the sorry base of the nodes and internodes they are present at the base of the nodes internodes and leaves so these intercalary meristem they are what they are doing they are helping in the elongation of the organs which are present mostly elongation of the organs which are present mostly in the base of the nodes internodes and leaves so this is all about the meristematic tissue it's three parts that is apical lateral and intercalary meristem so with the help of this diagram please go through them please learn them properly and then move on to the permanent tissue the next part which i am moving on now if you have not yet subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel so that you can get the updates which i am posting daily for your lessons uh, as per your curriculum so please do it and subscribe to my channel now let us move on to the next part now here comes the next set of tissue that is the permanent tissue so what is a permanent tissue so the previous one we have told that it was a meristematic tissue now this permanent tissue is actually it is made up of cells which have the, lost their ability to multiply so they have already lost their ability to multiply and in which the growth is either stopped and completely for the time being so it has either stopped completely or for the time being it has stopped uh the multiplication process or it has lost completely the uh, multiplying uh, capability so permanent tissue we can say depending on the form on the basis of this uh, functions performed the permanent tissue can be divided into first one the supporting tissue second one the conducting tissue and third one the protective tissue so it is divided into three parts that is the supporting tissue the conducting tissue and third one the protective tissue so on the basis of composition permanent tissue can be simple or complex so on the basis of the functions performed so this division is on the basis of the functions performed is it clear so supporting tissue conducting tissue and protective tissue they are all on the uh, basis of their functions performed and on the basis of composition how we are dividing them on the basis of composition if we are dividing them we are telling that they are either simple permanent tissue 
or they are complex permanent tissue so they are divided on the basis of composition into two parts that is simple and complex so permanent tissue on the basis of functions divided into three parts the supporting the conducting and the protective tissues and on the basis of composition they are divided into simple and complex one so let us move on to the supporting tissue so the supporting tissue the first part of the permanent tissue supporting tissue that is a simple permanent tissue what is it it is a simple permanent tissue it is a simple permanent tissue it is a simple permanent tissue and it is being divided into three types that is parenchyma polenchyma and sclerenchyma so these three simple permanent tissue as you see in this uh, diagram they are parenchyma polenchyma and sclerenchyma so uh you can see the differences between the intercellular spaces the thickening of the wall uh, the cell wall the nucleus and also this we will come in details in the let, next uh, uh, slides and also just you go through it uh, this is a supporting tissue it is a simple permanent tissue it is of three types that is parenchyma collenchyma and sclerenchyma so uh, in uh, previous classes uh, i think in seventh standard you have studied about tissues you have gone through the the uh, basic part of this tissue but in ninth you are studying it in details so you'll have to learn the structure the function of each and every part in detail with diagram so please follow my teaching and go as i am teaching so first we are here with parenchyma so what does this term parenchyma mean so let's first uh, let us discuss about that so para this is uh, all the terms mostly they are uh, derived from the greek word the word para that is means behind so the word para means behind and the word enkuma so that is enkuma so this means infusion so the word para means behind and this enkuma means infusion so how the structure of the cell looks like the cells are actually thin walled you can see the cells are thin walled and they are almost oval rounded or polygon you can see all the cell shapes they are almost oval polygonal are rounded in shape so cells are very loosely packed and their intercellular spaces there are intercellular spaces between in between them and each cell actually they are enclosing the single large central vacuole they are enclosing the single large central vacuole now where is it uh, mainly found this parenchyma cell where is it distributed they are mainly found in the softer region so where they are found now if you uh, just try to recall what are the softer regions of the plant the softer regions of the plants are the epidermis we can say the softer regions of the plants are epidermis the cortex outer region okay the cortex the outer region of the cortex outer region of the cortex the cortex outer region and the pith these all are the soft or the delicate parts of the plant now the pith that is the central region of the roots and the stem the pith that is the central region of the roots and the stem and in uh leaf mesophyll also we find parenchyma so in leaf mesophyll also we find parenchyma in leaf mesophyll also we find parenchyma now it is also found in xylem and phloem so it is also found in xylem and phloem so the major distribution is in the softer parts that is the epidermis the cortex and the uh, pith region the leaf mesophyll and all it is having the uh, parenchyma cells as well as in the xylem and phloem also we are having the parenchyma cells now let us move on to the functions so what are the main functions it stores food as in sweet potato and potato it provides temporary support to the plants by keeping the cells rigid okay it is providing temporary support to the plant by uh, uh, making the cells rigid it is the basic packing tissue and it protects the internal tissues it is uh, acting as a packing tissue and it is protecting the internal tissues now parenchyma tissues contains of the the uh, chloroplast and is called the collenchyma so parenchyma tissue contains the chloroplast which is called the chloroenchyma and they have the well developed air spaces and the tissue is known as erenchyma so when it is having chloroplast it is called chloroenchyma so presence of chloroplast chloroenchyma presence of airy spaces in the tissue it is called erenchyma in hydrophytes parenchyma they have large intercellular spaces to keep up the buoyancy 
in hydrophytes these parenchyma they have large intercellular spaces to keep up the uh, buoyancy so the more the intercellular spaces more air will be inside that and it help, helps to keep the uh, buoyancy so these are all the main important functions of parenchyma i have already told you the structure how the cells look like and it is coming from the greek word and what are the main like um, where is it distributed also i have already discussed so let us move on to the next one now here we are discussing about the cholenchyma so what is it cholenchyma cholenchyma it is uh, the greek word this colon comes from the greek word the glue colon terms comes is uh, termed as glue this col means glue and what does this term enchyma means enchyma or enchuma means infusion same like enchuma means infusion so this is also a greek term now uh, cholenchyma the structure of the cells are they are uh, actually living and somewhat elongated you can see these cells are somewhat elongated cells and they are internally each cell is having a large central vacuole so they are having large central vacuole they are having peripheral cytoplasm and the nucleus now uh, these uh, cell structure you just see they are having a peripheral central cytoplasm sorry and the nucleus and where are these cells mainly distributed they are distributed usually beneath the epidermis so their distribution is beneath the epidermis they are distributed beneath the epidermis okay is it clear so they are distributed beneath the epidermis and uh, epidermis in the stem as well as the uh, petiole of leaf stalk of dicot plants and it is usually absent in monocot plants so this is a, a thing you should remember that they are absent in monocot plants so they are present in the beneath the epidermis in the dicot leaves but they are absent in monocot plants so they are absent in monocot plants now uh, here what are the main functions of this it is supporting the plant by providing the tensile strength and rigidity to the plants due to thickening of the walls and it also provides elasticity to the plant parts is also providing elasticity to the plant parts is it clear so this is the second part of the supporting tissue of the simple permanent tissue so let us move on to the third part now here comes the last part that is the sclerenchyma of the uh, permanent tissue that is sclerenchyma so this term also this kelos this uh, it is also a greek term we all know that all the terms are being derived from the greek word so this greek word what does this mean this is scleros this is scleros which means hard so how is the structure now you can see the structure of this cell this is an elongated type of cell the cell is elongated and they are these are narrow cells which are having the tapering ends so ends are tapering now on maturity they are losing the protoplasm actually and they become dead so they lose the protoplasm and they become dead and their cell wall is very thick due to the lignin so they are having thick cell wall just follow the diagram just follow the pointing how i am pointing they are uh thick the they are due to the presence of lignin the walls are thick and where they, it acts like a cement and it hardens the central cavity of the cell is highly reduced in the formation of a secondary thickening and the sclerenchyma tissues they are actually of two types that is the fibers and the sclerids so they are mainly of two types the fibers and the the sclerids so these are of two types of tissues they are mainly they are called fibers fibers and sclerids now what is the how they are distributed where they are found they are mainly found in the stems and the veins of the leaves so distribution is stems and the veins of the leaves so veins of leaves and the stems where uh, these are the parts where they are found that is um, uh, these are the uh, harder parts or the uh, parts which are having uh, uh, thick type of cells which are uh, hard in nature so what are what is the sclerenchyma function so it is mainly providing the mechanical strength to the plant parts and it protects the plant from environmental forces it is protecting the plants from environmental forces like the strong winds now it is makes the plant hard and they are making the stiff because they are um, the, their cell wall is actually they have become thick due to the deposition of lignin and which is acting as a cement and it hardens it so the husk of coconut is made up of sclerenchyma tissue the husk of coconut it is actually made up of sclerenchyma tissue 
so this is all for today's lesson because it has already grown so big uh, in discussion of all the uh, permanent and meristematic tissue in the next video i'll be posting the conducting tissue that is the complex permanent tissue so as of now go through my lesson full so that when i'm coming with the next one it is easier for you to learn that one so uh, stay tuned stay updated and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you